In this video, I'm going to be covering Biome, which is a super great linter and formatter as quickly as possible. I'm going to be covering everything from what Biome is, how you can get started with it, how to integrate it into your own editor, how you can configure it to your liking, how you can integrate it with your version control, and even how you can use it for continuous integration. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And to really show you the power of Biome, I have a very simple project open on the left-hand side of our screen. This is from when I did an MCP server and client from scratch. I have a full video on it. I'll link it in the cards and description if you're interested. But the reason I chose this project is because it currently has no linting. So I can show you how to integrate Biome into a project with no linting, but I'll also talk about how to use a project that has ESLint and Prettier already configured. So the real reason that you would want to use Biome is that it not only takes care of linting like inside of ESLint, but it also does formatting just like Prettier. So if you've ever used Prettier or ESLint, Biome is essentially the combination of both of those into one single easier to configure and work with project, but also it's significantly faster as well. So it's easier to set up one single project and it's faster, so it has all of these different benefits. Really the only downside to Biome compared to these other tools is that it's a newer tool, which means it has less plugins and other things unlike ESLint, which has tons of plugins and support. Now, in order to get started with Biome, it's relatively simple. All we need to do is install Biome as a development dependency. So we can just copy this command and paste it directly into our server and we can run that. And the reason that it has this dash E flag is because generally when you're using a formatter, you want to make sure that you have that dash E, which is an exact configuration. So if we go into our package JSON, you'll actually see when we look for Biome that it has an exact flag here instead of any of these other symbols like the greater than and so on. This is the whole idea behind semantic versioning. Essentially, when you upgrade your product, it'll always use this version of Biome instead of like a slightly newer version. If you want to learn more about semantic versioning, I'll link a video in the cards and description that goes over that in detail. But now that we have Biome in our project, now we need to make sure we initialize and use it. So to configure it, we can run this npx biome init command. So we'll copy that over again. We'll paste that down. We'll run that command. And really all this command does is if we look at our files, you'll see we have a brand new biome.json file that sets up all the different configuration that we need for everything inside of Biome. This also kind of gives you the steps on how you want to set this up inside your project, but I'm going to go over and explain that all in detail. Now, before we dive into this biome configuration, I first want to talk about the usages for biome. And really, biome is kind of broken up into three categories. We have a format command that works just like Prettier. It formats all of your files. We have a lint command. This is going to lint all your files just like ESLint. And then we have a check command that's going to do all three of those inside of one single command. And by three, I actually mean there's another thing called organize imports. There's these things called like actions that you can form. If I look down here, you can see there's this assist section. That's these different actions that do things such as organizing imports, which is on by default. But there's a few other ones you can configure as well for different organization purposes. So we have these different organization things. We have linting and we have formatting. And usually you're just going to use this check command to do all of them at one single time. So what I like to do inside my project is inside the package JSON, wherever I have my different scripts being defined, I just like to come into this section. And I like to add a script. You can call it lint format or lint in format, whatever you want. And this is just going to run that biome command. So we can say that we want to run, we'll just copy this command, biome check, right? There we go. So that's going to run that command to essentially do all of this for us. Now, before we go further talking about different editor integrations to integrate this directly into VS Code, I just want to kind of show you an example of how this different biome command works. Because right now, if we look, we can see all the changes that we've made to our project compared to what it used to be. So you can see all we have is a biome file and we've changed our package JSON to add this linter and this biome file. And then of course, our lock file has changed as well for that new thing that we just added. So let's go ahead and run that command that we just added to our package JSON. We can say npm run biome I'm sorry, I think I called it lint format, just like that. And that's going to go through and it's going to format and lint all of our code. And of course, we're getting an error biome.js is not recognized. So let's go over to our package JSON and make sure that we have that exactly as we want. I think we can just change this to biome just like that. And that'll actually fix our problem. So let's run that linter again. And you can see it's gone through and it's changed a bunch of different things. First of all, you can see it's checked 10 different files. It fixed six of them and it found 17 different warnings that it's going to show us. Some it can fix, some it cannot. So if we scroll up, you can kind of see these different warnings. For example, avoid using a spread inside of an accumulator. That's a great idea. Same thing here, avoid using any. And there's a couple other things like, you know, if we can do certain changes inside of our code, but you'll notice some of this changes that are happening inside of our code are inside this build file. You can see we have build server.js here. We have build client.js. So this build folder appears like the built version of our project, but oftentimes you have this build version. It's currently ignored by our git ignore. We don't actually want to format or lint this file. It doesn't make any sense to format these things inside this build section of our code. So we could go in and we could like manually say that we want to ignore specific files. 
But the nice thing about Biome is that it actually has the ability to integrate directly with your version control. Currently, it only supports the Git version control, but it's really easy to set up. You can see here, version control, we just change enabled here to true, and this use ignored file, set that to true. What that's going to do is it's going to, first of all, integrate with your Git control, but it's also going to use this Git ignore to ignore any file that's inside of here. So it's no longer going to lint our node modules, our build, or our env file. It's going to completely ignore those for linting purposes. So now if we rerun this command, we should see that instead of checking 10 different files, it should check a bunch of less files. You can now see it's only checking seven files, and we only have two errors that are actually showing up inside of our code. One of them is this accumulator error, and this other one up here is going to be for any, and actually it's got another error up here, which has to do with parse int. So we have three different errors inside of our code, specifically two files are the things that it's talking about. Now to find those errors, we can just come in here and we can just control click on this. That'll bring us to that file. But you'll notice inside VS Code, we currently don't have any underlines or squiggles telling us about these errors. We need to make sure we set up biome inside of VS Code, and doing that is quite easy, and it's going to work pretty much the same for every single editor out there. What you want to do is you want to go to the extensions tab and search for biome. You'll see this one that's printed out by biome.js. Just make sure that you install that extension. That's going to give you the biome extension inside of your code editor. And then you need to make sure you do a couple configurations to make sure that it is your default formatter that's being used for everything inside your code, as well as all of your linting related stuff. So we can go over to our workspace settings. We can go over to the JSON version. You could put this in your user settings if you want, but I just want to start with a clean slate directly inside of here. And what we can do is we can add the different configurations we want. The first one we want is for our default formatter. So if we just search for default formatter, you'll see editor.defaultformatter. And specifically, we want this to be our biome formatter. So if we search for biome, you can see biomejs.biome. That means that now every time that we format a file, it's going to use biome. So if you're used to using prettier as your formatter, this is going to use biome for your formatter. You can also go ahead inside of here and you can set format on save. We'll just set that to true. And now every single time I save a file, it's going to format using that biome formatter. So if I go into this server file, for example, and I add a bunch of spaces here and I click save, it should actually do that formatting, but it looks like it's not for some reason. The best way to fix this particular problem is you can just click control shift P, type in biome, and you should see a restart biome option. I would just hit enter to restart biome and then make sure you close all your tabs and reopen them. This should only happen when you install Biome for the first time, because when your tabs are already open, it doesn't really know how to work with those. But once you do that, you can see now when I click Save, it actually does format this file exactly like I expect it to. So now I can make any changes inside of here, click Save, automatically formats, which is nice. You'll also notice when I go over to this client file, any different linting errors are going to show up as well as I can click on the link to figure out why that linting error is there. And I can go through and modify these different linting errors however I want. Now, there's still two other configurations that I want to make inside of our settings specifically for biome, and that is going to be in the editor.codeActionsOnSave section. These are essentially things that occur whenever you save your file. So we're already doing our formatting, but we can also do our automatic linting for anything that can be easily fixed. For example, if we just type in source.fix all and we use biome and we just set that specifically to the explicit word right here what that's going to do is it's going to automatically do all of our linting fixes that are completely safe to do automatically we can also organize our imports in essentially the same way we can say source dot organize imports dot biome set that to explicit and now it's going to organize our imports for us whenever we save as well so if we go back into this server file and for example i move zod all the way to the top and i click save you'll notice it moves it all the way back down to the bottom and any other linting related things that are really easy to fix such as like missing commas or whatever other linting things that are happening it can easily fix those for me as well so that's how we get biome set up not only with our version control but also with our editor the next thing i want to look at is how we configure biome because inside of biome there's a lot of different configuration you can do and it's really broken down into easy to see formatted files. So we have VS, VCS, that's for our version control system. That's wherever we configure our Git related version control. One additional thing I would like to enable inside of here is if we just come down onto the next line, we can set a default branch. In our case, main is that default branch. It could be main or master depending on your project, but this allows you to do a few additional things we'll talk about when we deal with like CI and so on. But I'd recommend setting your default branch if you are using a version control system like this. You can also modify what you want to do for your formatter for your linter, and for your assist section down here. So essentially, those are your three different categories in Biome. The formatter works pretty much identically to how Prettier works inside of it. They are almost the same. There's a few minor differences. And you can modify anything you want. For example, if you want spaces instead of tabs. If you want to, for example, remove semicolons, well, we can't do that in our generic formatter because this works on files like JSON, CSS, and so on. So instead, we need to go into the JavaScript specific section because the nice thing about Biome is we could just put the name of whatever language we want, like JavaScript, which works for like TypeScript, JSX, and so on. And in here, we can specify things for our formatter. For example, we can modify semicolons and we can 
can say that they're only as needed. Now, if I were to save this file, you can see all these semicolons are going to get automatically removed, but it looks like actually saving that's not quite working. I may need to restart Biome for that to work. So let's just do that quick Biome restart. And then I just wanna make sure that I close out of the file and I'm gonna reopen it. And now if we give that a save, you can see it removes those semicolons. So sometimes when you do these different configuration changes, you may need to restart Biome. And hopefully that's something that they can fix inside of their actual tool. But to be honest, you don't change these settings very often, especially inside the formatter. So you can modify any different format settings that you want inside of here. The linter is just like ESLint. You can modify all your different rules or you can just stick with the recommended. The nice thing is you can see these rules are broken into categories. So you can see we have categories for like accessibility, complexity, correctness. If we're in the accessibility section, I'm sure there's one for alt text. So if we search, you can see here, use alt text, which is great for different things to make sure your images use these alt text. And you can you know specify what level you want that to be. For example, you can make it an error so it fails your different builds and so on. If you have this set up inside of like continuous integration, or even just when I run the lint command, it'll throw an error inside that telling me I'm missing an alt tag specifically. So you have all that different configuration just like you would in say at ESLint. And then finally, we have this third quest section, which is kind of interesting because it's not ESLint or prettier. It's this assist section. And this is for specifically doing things like sorting of your imports and other different actions that are going to occur inside that on save section. So you can see here we have organized imports and fix all. This is where you can specify additional things kind of similar to that. They're just things that modify your code without changing the meaning or actual style of your code. So inside of here, we can come down and we can see that there's a bunch of different types. For example, use sorted properties. That's going to sort the different properties inside of CSS. We can turn that on if we want. And now our CSS properties are going to be sorted inside of a specific order. Now you can either enable these or not, depending on what you need and what you want. Some of them are a little stricter than others, and it could cause weird things inside your code. For example, if you enable certain settings, such as the one for sorted attributes or the one for sorted keys, that's going to make sure your objects have their keys sorted in a specific way, which is maybe not something you want. So these are something you can enable or disable as you want. And then inside the settings, you can again enable or disable them to happen on save automatically, which is a nice touch. Now figuring out what to change and what's all available can be quite tricky. So the nice thing about Biome is if you're on the left-hand side here we have the formatter section we have the linter section and we have the assist section and we can just go in and we can see all the different options and things that we can configure inside of every single one of these it kind of goes through what they are and the nice thing about the linter is we can go through like for example here's all the rules for javascript it lists out every single rule with a description whether or not the rule is safe or unsafe and as soon as i click on one of these you can see it gives me a nice summary how i can configure it description so i get a really detailed look at exactly what all of the code inside of these different configuration values do and same thing for assist i get the exact same thing describing what all these different actions do, how I can enable them inside my editor, and so on. So overall, setting up Biome is actually really simple. So now I want to kind of move on to talking about how we can use Biome in a continuous integration system. And before we talk about that, I need to talk about how it works specifically inside of your actual Git integration. So to talk about the Git integration, if we scroll down, we already enabled the Git integration. I talked about that. We're making sure we're using our ignore file. And I talked about this default branch section. Essentially, what this does is it allows you to add two extra options to your commands. We have the Biome check changed, and we have the biome checked staged. This allows you to specifically only run biome on files that are either staged or files that have changed from your main branch. Now stage essentially means it's a file that you have used git add to add or essentially stage, but you have not committed that yet. So all the files that have been added but not committed will be checked when you use the staged flag. The changed flag on the other hand, takes all the files that you've already committed to whatever your code is, that are different than the actual files in your main or master branch, whatever you set as that default branch up here, all the files that are currently committed but different are going to be used in that changed flag, which is really great because when we do continuous integration, we want to use this changed flag because we only want to run biome on the files that have actually changed. That'll help speed up our continuous integration So there's no point in running it on files that actually haven't changed yet. This will just make your actual continuous integration quicker, which will help you save money and time. Now you can use these flags in your actual local development if you want. For example, the staged flag can be really good for just making for sure that you have like pre-commit hooks and so on that run if you want to, but it's entirely up to you. So now I wanna talk about those Git hooks that I was talking about, especially for continuous integration. And Biome actually has a specific command called Biome CI that works exactly the same as Biome Check, but it's specifically designed for continuous integration. For example, you can't actually write any changes using this, and it's going to automatically use that changed flag for you, which is exactly what we want because we want it to only run on those files that have actually changed. So this is great specifically for a continuous integration environment. And the really nice thing about Biome is they actually have their own GitHub action that they have set up that you can use to make running it inside of Biome or inside of Git really, really easy. 
So you can just copy this over. It's going to work on push and pull requests specifically. And as you can see here, they have their own biome setup section right here. So you can just do that and then run your CI version of biome. And that's literally all you need to do to set up a GitHub action is just copy this file and put it inside of the actions folder inside of GitHub. And that's all it takes to set up biome. Now, if you want to see how this compares to the setup of Prettier, I'm going to link a video right over here where I go over the full Prettier setup so you can compare and contrast the two. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.